UK secretly arms Ukraine, sometimes even through smuggling. The airport in Polish Rzezov has become the epicenter of the West's processes to arm Ukraine. The once commercial airfield is now surrounded by air defense batteries. This is where weapons are transported for Ukraine secretly and openly. As stated in the Sunday Times, the airport is guarded by patriots. They were brought there a few weeks after the Russian invasion. They were joined by Sky Saba. These batteries are here because Rzezov has, in two years, become a huge international logistics hub that helps funnel tens of billions of dollars of Western military aid into Ukraine. The Rzezov runway served about 100 passenger flights per week. Now, military and cargo aircraft land there. Military aviation activity has been increased by 167%, with British aircraft landing perhaps the most actively after those from the United States. Details of how Britain and its Western allies move lethal cargo into Ukraine remain classified, but Rzezov is a key hub. In monetary terms, Britain has been a generous donor, providing $5.7 billion in military equipment, the third most among other countries, behind only Germany and the United States. British defense sources compare the center, known as the International Donor Coordination Group, to the military Amazon. Ukrainian logistics teams efficiently scour databases to find the weapons they need while their Western counterparts get to work. British insiders say most British military aid is making its way to the Ukrainian border via two routes. Over the past two years, direct flights have transported millions of ammunition, small arms, long-range missiles and anti-tank weapons from the UK to Poland. Heavier weapons such as armoured vehicles, tanks and artillery are transported across the English Channel and transported by train across Europe. There is a third, less publicised way in which Britain is helping to arm Ukraine. While Western allies have focused on modernising the Ukrainian military and bringing it into line with NATO, Kyiv remains heavily dependent on Soviet systems and weapons, stocks of which quickly dried up during the war. To help replenish Ukrainian stockpiles, some of Britain's bilateral aid was used to purchase Russian weapons from around the world. This work was kept completely secret, partly because of who Britain was buying it from and who was supplying it. A lot of this is being bought in secret, one defence source said, noting that some of the weapons purchased have come from countries whose governments are eager to play a role but don't want the Russians to know about it. In some of these deals, the UK effectively acted as a smuggler, buying equipment and then helping to arrange its transfer to Ukraine. We have been approached by arms dealers, all sorts of middlemen and strange people. The supply of Russian equipment and other supplies from all over the world is carried out by many entities and routes, one of the sources said. Russia's offensive on Kharkiv was stopped thanks to new weapons. The Ukrainian forces managed to stop the offensive of the Russian occupation troops on Kharkiv, in particular thanks to weapons from the United States. This was stated by the analyst of the German Bild news outlet Julian Rupka. The analyst reports that the advance of the Russian army stalled 11 days after crossing the border in the north of the Kharkiv region. According to him, in the direction of the village of Lipsy, the Russian armed forces remain in the same border villages that they managed to capture in the first three days of the offensive. In the area of Vovchansk, from which civilians were evacuated, fighting continues for the city. But there is almost no significant progress in the vicinity. The reason is the use of new American weapons by Ukraine. GLSDB bombs, Javelin ATGMs, 155mm artillery shells are actively used, which also entered the front line in the Donetsk region, notes Robka. At the same time, according to the analyst, the Russian command continues to send its soldiers to suicidal attacks. For May the 20th, the Russian armed forces lost 67 units of armored vehicles in Ukraine. However, the Russian command continues to throw troops into suicidal attacks. The article reads, Russia's two-pronged assault in Kharkiv Oblast that began on May the 10th is exploiting Ukraine's troop shortage, forcing it to make difficult decisions about where to commit reserves. Two weeks into the offensive, one group of Russian forces is already fighting in the streets of the town of Vovchansk, about 70 kilometers away from the city of Kharkiv, while the other is trying to push toward the town of Lipsy, just under two dozen kilometers away from the city. The Kremlin has options for what it can try to accomplish in the area, 
depopulating Kharkiv, taking territory and, most importantly, getting Ukraine to commit reserves needed elsewhere. Russian forces captured and then lost a lot of territory in Kharkiv Oblast in 2022 following the start of Russia's full-scale invasion. Throughout 2023, they conducted major offensives in the Kupiansk district, which achieved little except inflicting casualties on both sides. 